the next speaker is Chan Tia Shi, and the paper is uh, at Gensen Style Monadic Translation of Gadol System T. Chan Tia, please. Start. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. So today I'm going to present a monadic translation um, which, uh, of Gödel System T, um, which is translated in the spit array of Genton's negative translation of classical logic, as we will see later. And then uh, we are going to demonstrate um, how various of structures and properties of T-definable functions can be directly reviewed via, these in, via the instantiations of this uh, translation. And then firstly, I want to admit that like, this work is motivated by, um, by um, some colleagues. So firstly, Paulo Oliva presented his work uh, on a, a simple uh, um, direct proof of uh, Barry recursion close theorem, where there he used some, mona uh, some syntactic translation of system T. And then, and then I, I, I implemented their work in ACTA and then tried to get some, I used some idea from Marty Escado's work on dialogue trace to refine my uh, implementation. And then later when I heard to hear the work of um, Benno Vandenberg on generalization of uh, Claude's negative translation, I noticed that, oh yeah, the translation presented by Oliva and Stella is very similar to Genton's translation. And that's how I started this generalization to a more uh, general one. Okay, so I will start with recalling uh, Genton's negative translation of uh, classical logic. So um, remember that in his proof, he simply put in a double negation, uh, sorry, in his translation, he simply puts a, a double negation in front of uh, primitive formulas and then disjunction and existential quantification. But impl in implication and um, products, oh, sorry, a conjunction are translated inductively. And then in this way, we can prove that if a formula is provable in classical logic, then its negative translation is provable in actually minimal logic. And then this translation can be generalized by replacing this double negation by arbitrary nuclei. Uh, when I say nuclei, it means that it is a function on formulas satisfying some conditions. And uh, these functions, sometimes they are called strong monads, for example, in the work of Escado and Oliva, and because they really behave like uh, strong monads in the, in the categorical sense. Um, but I still use the word nuclei here because as I say, my, I, I got the idea from Benno Vandenberg and he used this terminology in his book. And um, so for example, like for arbitrary uh, nuclei, we can prove that if a formula is provable in intuitionistic logic, then its translation with the, respecting to this uh, nuclei is provable in intuitionistic logic. And then um, when, this, when this nuclei J is double negation, then we have the result here. When it is the continuation monad, then we can then we we can embed classical logic into intuitionistic logic, or we select J A to be A or falsity. Then we can embed intuitionistic logic into minimal logic. All these results are sort of quite well known in, in, in proof theory or in logic. And then now we want to do this, but not for logic, but for some simple programming language called System T. So, uh, so the turn language of Gödel system T is actually just lambda calculus, simply type lambda calculus with natural numbers and with primitive recursor. And um, because later it's, uh, we found it convenient to have also products. So we also extend it with the products, but this extension is not necessary. So now once we extend with products, so it means that we, uh, we have a base type of natural numbers we have function type, we have pro product type. And then for terms, we have variables, we have a lambda abstraction, application and constants. So we have constants for natural numbers. So zero successor and the primitive recursor. We will write the first argument to be the base, the, the base case and then the inductive function and then the number and then the output. Okay, so for product, we have the pair function and pairing function and the projection functions. 
And then, so in this talk, I will use the common conventions such as like, um, we write n plus one rather than success of n. We write the pair rather, rather than, than writing pair. Okay, and I use subscript rather than, um, than, than say pair one, pair two, subscript one, subscript two. Okay. Now we, now we can start doing the translation. Recall that like, uh, in Genton's translation, he has, uh, um, he, have, uh, he has a nuclei for formulas, but because here we don't have disjunction um, or we don't have co-product co type, we only have one base, base type. So we can simply assume that we have a type which behave like the nuclei for the for logic. So we only have a type. This is a type for 16T. And then so our notion of a nuclei consists of a type Jn in T, and then together with two terms. So these two terms correspond to the condition for nuclei for logic. So these two terms, the first term is eta, it just map a number a, a, a natural number to an element in Jn. And kappa is the, the classic extension. It extends um, a function from n to jn to jn to jn. And then here, we don't assume any restrictions. We don't even assume the monad laws or anything. So as you will see that like later, not all our examples will satisfy, will satisfy um, the monad laws. So um, we, may, we will write uh, f with the superscript kappa to mean the kappa of f, the extension of f. Okay, then given a nuclei and, and a nucleus, now we can translate, firstly translate the types of system T. So the base, as you, uh, I think you can easily guess that like the base type N is translated to JN in the nuclei. And, um, and then the implication and product, uh, sorry, function types and product types are translated in, inductively. So this is exactly like the same way that um, Genton translate um, the, the propositional logic. And then for terms, now we want to translate a term T of type sigma to some term with sequence rate J uh, of, uh, of the type, which is the translation of the type of T. So um, for, because the function types are translated um, inductively, so the translation of the simply type lambda calculus component is sort of trivial. And then also the same for the products. The only interesting part comes from the, 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 the terms for natural numbers. So for zero, it's quite natural that it will be translated using the eta from the, uh, from the nuclei, nucleus. And for successor, it is translated like this. And that's because if you, um, that's because kappa with eta um, concaten, um, yeah, concatenated to any function, this is behave exactly like a functor. This is a functor mapping functions from n to n to jn to jn. Okay, then the only difficulty actually arises only in the translation of, of the recursor. So here you can see I put a green ke here. This is a term for class extension and how is it defined? So let's see, see that like we, if we are given a term A of type low J and a function F from JN to low J to low J. So we want to define this term to, in order to translate, uh, the, trans, the, the translate, translate the recursor. So you can see that like this term here is actually what we want is a term of type JN to row J. And then we can say, okay, of course we would like to translate the recursor using the recursor itself. So this will be a, a sort of quite suitable candidate, but its type is from n to low j. And then, but we cannot use the, the kappa, the, the term kappa directly because kappa just maps things to jn. But here we have the translation of rho. So that's why we want to, that's why we, we, we uh, add this term ke which translate, uh, which extend a function from n to low j to jn to low j inductively on the type rho. So the base case is of course given by the kappa and then the function space and the, pro and, and the product types, yeah, they are just, yeah, defined in like actually in a quite natural way. So maybe here I don't, I, I will not expand this, but then we will use 
then, then, then we'll use this term to um, to uh, map it to this one, uh, sorry, map it to this one, then we will get the term of function from Jn to rho, and this will give us the translation of the recursor. Okay, so here the translation of the terms actually correspond to the uh, to the southernist proof of uh, Genton's translation. Okay, so the next thing, okay, now we have the translation, but then how can we know that this translation makes sense? So here we want to prove that it is sound using logical relation to say that like a term is translated to, uh, so a term is related to its translation. So suppose we are given a relation between, uh, nat between natural numbers and elements of Jn. So this would be the base case of our logical relation. And then we extend it to one on four arbitrary types of system T. So by induction on, on the type rho. So the base case is given. So we only need to define the function space and, and uh, products. So for function space, we just simply say that two functions are related if they are related for the related inputs. If the inputs are related, then the outputs are related. And then for pairs, for products, we we'll just say that they are related component-wise. Okay. Then we have our uh, theorem for logical of logical relation. So suppose that this given base case of logical relation, Rn, it satisfies these two conditions. Then we can show that um, any closed term T is related to its translation. Um, with respect to this logical relation extended from the base case. So these two conditions are actually quite natural. It basically says that like all the uh, eta and kappa, they, they should preserve this logical relation. So for the eta, it's quite simple. We just say that any number n is related to eta n. And for kappa, it says that if we have two functions f and g, they are pointwisely related. So it says that for any i, f i is related to g i. Note that g here has output type j n. So as long as f and g, they are pointwisely related, then f is related to the classical extension of g. So we have, to, we, as long as we prove these two conditions, then we can show that any, two, any, any term is related to its translation. Okay, now let's try to have some examples and applications. So the first example comes from proof theory, like majorizability. So basically, this is um, this is an extension of the less than relation on natural numbers to functions to higher order objects. So yeah, this will allow us to sort of specify some kind of bounds of programs. So as you can see that, that the, the, the majorizability relation is defined um, inductively on types. Here, um, I omit the case for, for, uh, for products because it's quite, tri quite trivial. So the base case says that uh, the natural number n is less than m. And for the function space, it's just said that if the input x is smaller than y, then the output fx is smaller than gy. And then, oh, sorry. So here we say of a, 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 a term t is, uh, is majorized by u if t is smaller than u, and we call u the majorant of t. Yeah, and the whole will prove that any closed term of system t is majorized by some other closed term of system t. So here we can just use our Frank word to, to easily recover this result. So we, we, in specific, we work with this nucleus. So the Jn, it's just n, and eta n is eta is just an identity, and then the interesting thing is this kappa. So now g is a function from n to n. It is just a sequence of numbers, and then kappa of g basically kappa of g of n just will give you the greatest element of the first um, of the first n elements of g. So. So that so we can and then we can um, we can we can uh, define it using the primitive recursor. But here I just write write it using uh, using um, a definitional uh, using equations. But kappa, but here this kappa can be defined using as a t term. So in this way we have we have um, we have a nuclear we have a nucleus, and then the idea is that this j n is just the type of majorance of some numbers. 
Okay. Then, um, then Howard's result is just a corollary of our fundamental theorem. Remember, um, remember that for the fundamental theorem, we also need to, we only need to check these two conditions. So here it is. So only need to check that in the yeah, uh, any natural number n is smaller than eta n, but eta n is just n. The second thing is that we need to check that for any f and g, if they are pointwisely related, then then f is related to the classic extension of g. But then now we have f i smaller than g i, they are pointwise related. And then we can also check that, as I say, g kappa give you the, the, the greatest element of the first j element of g of g. So this, and if j is more greater than i, then g i must be smaller than g of kappa of, I of j. Yeah, and then, and then we can easily check these two conditions. Then by the fundamental theorem of logical relation, then we have that any closed term of system T, E is majorized by its J translation. Okay, actually this translation is not only suitable for studying like a property of all of uh, arbitrary types or of elements of arbitrary types, but it's also suitable for studying properties for specific function types. For example, like here, I want to study the property called continuity of functions of types from Bayer space to natural number, this type two object. I only want to study a property of a type two object. Okay, so we firstly record the definition, like we say a function M is a modulus of continuity of F. If for all input alpha and beta, now alpha and beta, they are functions from N to N. So if they are equal up to the first M alpha bit, so they are equal up to the first, uh, M alpha will give us a number. So this is a modulus, tell us that like alpha and beta, um, they have the same prefix up to this number, then the outputs are the same. So it basically says that F, the output of F depends only on only the finite part of input. And M will tell us how, how, many, how many bits of the inputs are needed, okay? So, now we want to use the translation to compute the M for each function F or for each closed term F in system T. So we'll work with this nucleus. So firstly, I, like here, I just list the definition and then and the result, and then we'll go back to the intuition. So we construct this nucleus, JN, with eta defined in this way and kappa, kappa defined in this way. No worries, we will go back later. We'll come back to this later. And then as long as we can, con and then, okay, okay. And we'll also construct an element, which is called the generic element of this type. Then we can show that every closed term F in system T has a modulus of continuity. And this modulus of continuity is given by the translation of F applied to this input omega. And then we take a second component. And let's see why. So the intuition is that, um, an element W in JN, which is a pair, a pair of functions. Um, the, the second component is a modulus of continuity of the first component. And the first component here represents a value of some functions. And then, so here we want to, for eta, we want to extend a natural numbers, a natural number to a pairs of functions. And the second component is the modulus of continuity of the first component. So we extend n to a constant function with a value n. And then of course, this is a constant function. So it's a modulus, it's also a constant function with value zero. And then for kappa, uh, we want to extend a function g, mapping a number, uh, map of, or you can consider g as a sequence of, um, of continuous functions. So this is the value, this is the, this is the um, modulus of continuity. And then so we have a sequence of continuous functions. And then we want to extend it to a function from pairs to pairs. And then, so given a pair W, so we just use this W, we use its value, looking at, uh, in order to, to define a, a function, we look at the value of the input W at the input alpha. And then we, uh, we, we, we ask a G, like which, which, one I, which one it is in your sequence. And this will give you a value um, of the function. And then for the, uh, for the modulus continuity, it is simply because we have two options. One, we have one continuity, one modulus of continuity given by W. 
we have another one given by G, and then it is a natural light. We choose the bigger one to be the modulus of continuity. You still have 10 minutes. Okay, thanks. And then, um, so now suppose we have a function f from Bayer space to natural numbers. Now, then it will be translated to a function fj of this type. So the idea is that let's construct an input for this translation of f. So this element will have this, will have this type from jn to jn. So this element is called the general element, and it is defined in this way because we want somehow we want to extend the input for f. So suppose we have an input alpha for f, then this, uh, this omega will somehow extend this alpha or, um, and in this way. For example, like the alpha here, it will, it will return. Remember, you, uh, whenever you in f, you are assessing, you, you want to ask the value of alpha. It will just give you the n, n, the n bit of alpha to you. So it just keeps the value of alpha. But then because the, now the n bit of alpha is used, is assessed, then we need to return, we need to return n plus one as the modulus of continuity because the n bit means we have used at least n plus one bit uh, in, the, in the input. So this alpha basically just code the input of f. So if we um, apply fj to omega, then we'll get both the value and this value will be, or will be equal to f or pointwise equal to f. And we will also have a modulus of this value. So now from now, uh, from now on, we will use V for the value and M for the modulus. So now let's come back to the proof. So the proof as um, obviously we will use the fundamental theorem. So we only, we need to give the base case uh, of the logical relation. So here the base case says that um, like exactly like what I said before, it says that the value of W at alpha, oh yeah, by the way, this modular, uh, this relation is parametrized by, uh, um, a input, by the input alpha. So the relation says that like the first component of W is the value of um, at alpha, uh, will give you the value N. And then the second component says that the, the sec, um, MW is the modulus of continuity. And then we will, then it's not difficult to check that this condition is, uh, is satisfied. Then you, by the fundamental theorem, we have that F is related to Fj for any alpha. And then we can also show that alpha is related to F omega. Then put them together, we will have the F alpha is related to Fj of omega for any alpha. And this will tell us two things. One is that the original function F is equal to the, to the value of Fj omega. The second thing is that Fj omega is the modulus of continuity of V. So, so then this is also a modulus of continuity of F. Okay, and actually there are more applications. For example, like if we, um, this is actually give us a um, call by, I think this call by name style pa continuation passing um, style translation. If we take JN to be the continuation monad. And then I think we can also use this to compute sort of complexity in the sense like the number of reducing steps we can also use it to, to compute uniform continuity. We, like, and the bar recursion example come back, uh, came from uh, the, the work of Oliva and Stella. And then I also have some work in progress on, um, on proving that like, the type of one functionals is bounded by glowing hierarchy. Okay, so in summary, like we introduce a translation parametrized by a weak notion of, new, of nuclei. And then uh, by working with different instant, uh, different nuclei, we can we can review different properties of system T functionals, um, and then and then we can very easily verify that they are correct using the fundamental theorem of logical relation. And then all this work has been implemented in ACTA, so it is available in my in my web page. And then thank you for your attention. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, and now we have like five minutes for asking questions. There is one question showing up, Frank. Uh, thank you for a very nice presentation of this elegant work. You analyzed the negative translation in great detail. Have you thought about the positive translation and what it might give you? Maybe some weak notion of commonant. That's a question from Frank. jean -Pierre? Yeah, um, that's a very interesting question. I never think about this. But when you say um, when you say 
positive um positive translation um, when you say positive translation do you mean instead of the double negation you just replace double negation by another sort of monad but translate the type in a positive way is that right Blank? Uh, yeah okay yeah i mean um, there are these two translations the positive and the negative translation right mm -hmm. they, they differ in where you place the um um you know the box or the double negation or whatever it might be yeah mm -hmm. um no i don't have example of that but I think the positive one, this, um, this translation generalized both, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, sorry, no, I don't have any um, example of that, but this is interesting, I think I would think about that, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think this is very interesting, very general, but mm -hmm. there's always the, you know, the notion of a monad and you wonder if there's a corresponding notion of a co-monad hiding somewhere. Um, and maybe oh, it's just a different mm -hmm. translation um, for the formulas because there are two fundamentally different translations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Other questions? You can ask questions by either typing into Q&A or you can also raise your hand and then you just speak. Anyone like to ask a question? Maybe I understood from the last uh, from the last slide that your approach is is going to be extended, right? You're going to uh, polymorphic calculi as well. Yes, okay. I was. Um, um, currently, I'm working on extending to uh, dependent types. Uh -huh. but what about system F? Like system F. Hmm. Like polymorphic lambda calculus. Did you consider that? I can't mm -hmm. hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, um, no, currently, no, I'm not considering mm -hmm. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Uh, still no questions, no further questions. Okay, so thanks a lot again. Okay.